What's happening, everybody? Today is December 6th, 2015. Um, I'm not even going to say it. Um, got a couple of things to use today that uh, they're, not in, they're not new to me per se, um, but I've not used them before, so, so this is going to be a learning experience for me. Um, let's get down to the tools of the trade. Today's brush is going to be one that I've not used in quite some time. Jiminy. One that I've not used in quite some time. Um, Paladin Chief. This is from the first run. This is a super. Uh, it's about 20, 26 millimeters or so at the base. And I don't remember what the uh, I don't remember what the loft is, but uh, the thing is nice. It's my smallest brush, um, and it's one that I tend to use in soaps um, that don't come in big containers because most of my brushes are pretty big. Um, today's soap is actually going to be one of the things that I've not used before. Um, this is one actually that I've had for a bit. I just have never really gotten around to using it. Um, it's the original Triple X. This is actually, uh, from what I understand, this is Aqua de Parma. Um, and, and you know, ones that come in this UFO containers, what they're, how they're referred to, um, those are supposed to be like real deal Aqua de Parma, so... So yeah, I mean, I've, I've used Aqua de Parma a couple times, so if, if, uh, if it really is the exact same product, then I've used it before, and uh, I'm not really missing out on much. Um, I actually should show you guys the razor first, but I've started here, so I might as well finish. Something tells me that I may have to uh, reload this brush at some point in the proceedings. Um, today's razor is going to be uh, Wolfman WR10C, but this is the one. Don't know if you can see that right there. Uh, this one has the increased blade gap, 0.74 millimeters. Um, so it is a little bit more aggressive than your average everyday running the mill Wolfman, but quite frankly, there's no such thing as an average Wolfman because they're excellent razors. This one has a custom handle. Um, Aristocrat style. It's pretty good. Also at the bottom here, and I never noticed this until today, but uh, this actually is kind of like hollowed out or whatever, uh, curved in. It's nice actually. Nice touch. Thank you, James. Hold on. Um, so yeah, and the blade um, that's lodged in its clutches is a uh, Paul Silver Super Iridium. Super Iridium. All right. Um, I guess first things first. Um, don't know, uh, if you guys are, check your email or whatever, but, uh, Barrister Man sent out an email earlier today indicating that, uh, Vetiver Santal is, uh, is on its way out. So, yeah, as, I guess whenever stocks are depleted, I don't know if that means that there's one more run coming, or if it's just what's on hand, but, uh, yeah, it, uh, it's not long for this world, so to speak. So if you like it, I suggest you get it. Um, there is going to be a sale on it one day this week. I don't quite remember exactly what day. Um, I guess I can, I can post that or something. There's a link to the thing. I'll just post it like down in the, in the thumb of the... <sighs> um, this... Uh, it smells exactly like real deal ADP, so I guess that's uh, that's a plus. Um, lather is uh, the lather's familiar, you know. From what I understand, this stuff has a bit of menthol, but I've never really, I've never really detected it. Um, there's still quite a bit of lather in this brush, so I may not have to. I may not have to load again. Anyway, a um, couple things. Um, actually before, before that, um, I always have a look, you know, I get a email notification whenever, you know, I get a new subscriber here on YouTube and, uh, I check out everybody. I check everybody out that, uh, you know, that adds me to the skip tracer in me. Um, so there was a, uh, there was a woman that added me yesterday, Erica, 
Erica Sammons, I believe her name was. She's uh, from Massachusetts. <laughs> and I had a look at her channel, and uh, she's pretty funny. I, I watched one of her videos. She's pretty funny. She's talking about uh, she's talking about the girls at the coffee shop, and uh, it's funny because you know you guys heard me. You guys have been around my channel for a bit, or that have been watching my videos for a while. You know that I've mentioned uh, Crema in Nashville numerous, numerous times. And uh, it's funny because one of the main reasons that I actually started going to Crema is because a girl that worked there named Julie, she was beautiful. And I just used to go, honestly, just to go talk to her. But uh, yeah, she mentioned that, uh, you know, about how coffee shops really need to only hire good looking girls. And I, th I thought it was pretty funny. So nice one, Erica. That was a nice lull to start the day with your video. This lather feels like Aqua de Parma. It's not the densest lather in the world. It is a, it's good slickness. Cushion is not quite uh, there, quote unquote. But uh, it is good. It's getting the job done. This, uh, you know, again, this razor has the increased blade gap. But what really ratchets up is uh, effectiveness is the fact that it's gotten more blade exposure not just the uh, not just the blade gap <clears throat> and I don't know what made me think about it earlier today but uh, I uh, was thinking I was listening to some music when I woke up not too long after I woke up and uh, I was thinking, whoa, I got myself. Um, and I know exactly where it is, too. Where is that thing? Yep. Um, yeah, I was, uh, I was listening to music, and it made me think. I, um, you know, you guys have heard me talk about dance music a lot, a lot. Um, you know, given that that's my thing. But before, before I got into dance music, I was absolutely a hip hop head. And, uh, you know, in the early 90s, some of the subject matter wasn't the most, uh, wasn't the savoriest subject matter out there. But uh, I loved it nonetheless. And here's the thing, honestly, is that uh, even though I did listen to hip hop a lot, a lot, I mean, it's what I listened to back then. Um, I honestly was way more into the, uh, I was way more into the beats than the fact that somebody had a microphone and was saying things into it. Lyrics, uh, lyrics and music has never really been my thing. I remember I used to tell everybody when I was younger, music, around, music was around for hundreds, probably thousands of years before people had to mess it up and start putting words in it. I can, uh, I'm more than capable of uh, getting meaning from a tune. I don't need somebody on a microphone telling me. I just don't need anybody on a microphone telling me what they think the tune is about. Um, anyway, so yeah, you know, I, and I used to tell them all the time that, you know, I listened to this stuff, yeah, but I didn't care about what people were saying. It was all about the beats for me. Which is why, you know, back then, I would have told you that I was absolutely and exclusively into uh, West Coast rap. And uh, in retrospect, this stuff really is very, very slick. Um, in retrospect, I actually listened to a lot more East Coast stuff than, uh, than I guess I realized back then. But a friend of mine, Giovanni, I actually know him for ages. He was a fellow army brat. Um, met him when I lived in Bama from 1990 to 2001. There's some trivia for you. I lived in Bama. Ew. Um, anyway, yeah, I, uh, you know, so I was listening. And I was listening, like I said, I was, I was there like in the... In the very early 90s, the absolute very tail end, and I'm talking about like maybe the second half of 1989, um, you know, to about 96 or so is really when I was exclusively only cared to listen to uh, 
to hip hop. And uh, I mean, I was there for the golden era. You know, and I'm gonna get off that subject for a second and talk about these uh, Paladin Chief brushes. Um, I have another Chief, it's in blonde, but uh, it is very, very scrubby knot and I adore the thing. Um, the fact that they're not way over the top densely packed absolutely works for them. Because here's the thing, I've already done a pass on my head, I've lathered my neck, and there's still this much lather in the brush. That's a good look. Um, anyway, yeah. So I was there for the golden era of hip hop, so to speak, and I loved it. There was a lot of records. One of the things that I uh, that I loved about that era of hip hop is that there were party records. Records that were made for DJs to play at parties and clubs and for people to dance and have a good time and not be stupid too. And now I don't really know that a lot of that stuff can sell because you got people more worried about how they're presenting themselves on the microphone, and it's so ridiculous. But by the same token, this is also the, uh, the heyday of gangster rap. And the East Coast, West Coast Wars. Uh, back then, I used to love, love, love West Coast rap. Reason being, because I loved the beats. I absolutely loved those beats. The samples that those guys selected, the level of polish in the mix downs and the EQing and everything was so much better, or I much preferred it, I should say, to what was happening on the East Coast. Like, Wu-Tang Clan, I've never been into Wu-Tang Clan. I don't like that music. To me, it sounds like that producer, uh, Rizza, I think is who used to write their beats. Yeah, Rizza. It just sounded like he just, a lot of those, a lot of those beats sounded like he just tried to put as little effort as possible into the finished product. One second. This is going to be a scary buff with this razor on the upper lip, but I've got to do it. Um, actually, you know what? Let me do this first. Word. Um, and another thing that, uh, you know, back then, I guess I would have, uh, actually, I guess, I, yeah, I, I know. There's no guessing about it. I know. That back then, I, uh, I thought it was too much of a bad man to admit that I was really into New Jack Swing, but I was really into New Jack Swing. Um, and what made me think of that is that uh, gentleman by the name of Desi Magby, professionally known as DJ Psycho from Detroit Techno Militia. Mr. Be no, no, no. Mr. Uh, Mr. Magby is a Batman DJ. He, uh, he's one of those guys that's your DJ's favorite. He's your favorite DJ's favorite DJ. It's one of those kind, you know what I mean? Like, as far as tricks and all that goes, he can do all that. Selection, mixing, anticipation of what the, of what the floor wants to hear. The man is, the man is a great, great DJ. But uh, he's got a show, like a podcast thing, that he does called Verbs from the Dungeon. <clears throat>
And one of the, uh, actually the most recent one, he, had a, he started off with a tune that I completely forgot about, but once I heard it, I was like, wow, that's taking it back. One second. And I don't even know why I do this. It's not like I'm, it's not like I absolutely have to have a baby smooth mustache area, but I guess I just like to do it because it's a nice little exercising technique or whatever. Um, He started the tune, or he started off that mix with uh, that tune by Portrait, Here We Go Again, and I'll link it in the thing down there. If you don't recognize the tune from the title, perhaps when you click on the link down there you may remember it, but uh, I don't really think that that record was quite as big a hit. As it as, I, as it should have been, because again, that's one of those ones that I was really really into back then, but uh, it just didn't really seem to get too mega huge. Another one from those days. That I really liked a lot. Excuse me. Another one of those, another one from those days that I liked a lot that was kind of in the same vein was uh tune called I Don't Want to Fall in Love by Taylor Dane. That was more of a pop record, but uh, whew, what a tune. Huge, huge, enormous synths. And then like, the old school like, the old school like orchestra patches on the synth, it's great. I'll, uh, I'll link that one down there I, su I suppose as well. Um, Seriously, like this brush, this brush is still holding onto a gang of lather. Um, even though I, I, uh, I use a lot of lather in my shaves. Um, the, uh, there was a Teddy Riley, Teddy Riley remix of that uh, Taylor Dane record as well that was really good. This is the new blade in this thing. It's a Feather Professional Super, which is the more aggressive one. Well, this thing is sailing. I get a lot of use out of these blades. Perhaps too much. Um, perhaps too much because uh, I don't really, I tend to keep them in these things for months because all I'm doing is just this. But uh, I much prefer shaping up my beard with this. I feel confident in saying that this actually is That this soap is the real deal um, aqua de porno. You know, they say that this has a bit of menthol in it, but I've never been able to discern it. So, if they say it's there, okay. I don't even smell it. I mean, if you can't feel it, you definitely aren't going to smell it, but...
right. And I think, I think that's that. And I would be a jerk if I didn't mention, um, I got my Secret Santa shipment from, uh, there's a Secret Santa on Reddit, and I got my Secret Santa, uh, gifts on Saturday. I had the supreme good fortune of being paired up with Sean from Chapeau Lux. So I got a puck of, uh, Chuck and Speak number 88, a bottle of uh, Champ de Lavande, a bottle of Clubman Special Reserve, and a bottle of uh, his alcohol-based splash that he's working on. So I'm looking forward to checking that out. Sean, you'll be hearing from me shortly in regard to how I feel about that good stuff, because I'm sure it will be good, just like the rest of your uh, aftershaves. Actually, how's about you make it better? I'm going to put some pressure on you, dude. Um, yeah, still plenty of slickness left on the old skin piece after this uh, lather's going. This is good stuff. It's very good. It's very good. Um, I think that this, that those triple X's in the UFO and only the ones in the UFO um, containers, I think they still go for a little bit less than what, uh, than what Aqua de Parma goes for new. Not to mention that Aqua de Parma has currently undergone a reformulation, I understand, and I've not used the new stuff. But I understand that the performance is better, but uh, there is pretty much no scent to speak of, from what I, uh, from what I understand. Again, this stuff is really, really slick. You saw how many times I put water on my skin, and I still had the confidence to use this aggressive razor without any lather being there. Good stuff. Today's aftershave. Another one that I've had, I've had this probably for about a year, but I have never once used it, even though I have opened it. Um, fine, triple X. I um, actually traded this one. Somebody was looking for a, uh, for a fine Sabon Lavande, and I had an unopened one. He had an, op an unopened one of these, so uh, I made the trade. Now, I've not smelled... Actually, I don't think that Aqua de Parma makes a Colonia Splash. It's pretty good. Oh, that's nice. That is quite pleasant. I actually was uh, inspired, we'll say, to use this stuff um, from somebody else's Shave of the Day post earlier today. Chris... That smells really nice. You definitely, unfortunately, can smell the menthol big time. This also kind of reminds me, there's just a wee bit of American blend in here. But it doesn't matter because it's still nice. <clears throat> oh yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, you guys, that is it. I, uh, I hope everybody's had a good week. Um, I hope you will have a good week. Um, don't think that I'm going to be talking to you guys next weekend. I'm going to Nashville. Um, Jose, Jose Aldo versus Conor McGregor next week. Uh, I sincerely, I think that Aldo's going to get it done, and I really hope he does, because I really could not stand a world where Conor McGregor is a champion. That would be gross. Anyway, yeah, hope you guys... Hope you guys have had a good week. Hope you will have a good week. And I'll see you probably the weekend after Christmas. I'm going back. No, actually, probably the 19th. Um, yeah, because i got to go to Nashville the weekend after that as well. And uh, I'm looking forward to those weekends. Anyways, hope you guys are well. Hope you'll be well. And I'll see you soon. Peace.